Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ben Tihanki. I teach in the Management and Organization Department of De La Salle, and I'm also the coordinator for the Business for Human Development Network. So our goal is really to mainstream humanistic management. So we are very interested in the social enterprise space, but we are more radical. We think that all businesses in the Philippines should be social enterprises. Uh, we want to change the narrative because right now, SE is like a niche practice. But our constitution is very clear. Every economic entity is mandated to contribute to the common good. It's in the constitution. In our corporation code, the, the goal of the corporation is to be a partner for the social economic development of the country. It's in the code of corporate governance in the SEC that all businesses incorporated in the Philippines shall contribute to community development. It's all there. However, in practice, many of our businesses, business managers, and even our entrepreneurs get their ideas of business from the West, which is a profit-making, accounting statement-driven entity. This is a Western creation, but unfortunately, we love everything Western, so we incorporated this. But as Filipinos, we believe in pakikipagkapwa tao, bayanihan, diba? all of these things that we love about our country. So I think we do that through all of those things. Teaching, so we try to indoctrinate our students. It's difficult. That's why we need more case studies from the SE space so that we can share with our students that look at these uh, businesses. They're Filipinos, they have love of country, but they also like making money. There, there's no problem with that. Because you need money to pay the employees, you need money to buy supplies. Uh, we also do it through advocacy. Uh, we have a regular running column in the Manila Times. It's called Managing for Society. So I'm, I'm probably going to invite all of you here to contribute columns for us. We get columns even from abroad to mainstream this idea that humanistic management and social enterprises should be the norm. Everything else should be the minority. Uh, especially in our country where we're growing allegedly by almost 7% every year for the last 10 years, but our poverty rate is still above 20%. Go figure. This is one of the few countries where we create more billionaires while many Filipinos remain dirt poor. So obviously we really need to reconfigure a lot of this. Uh, we feel we're really just tiptoeing around the problem, you know, fighting at the edges. And we feel a big responsibility because De La Salle University is one of the leading business schools in the country. Many of the top executives of the top 100 firms of this country are graduates of De La Salle. So that means this is also part of our, uh, maybe we can call it penance. <laughs> uh, so our greatest challenge, and this is where we need your help, is to have this combined effort to change the mindset of entrepreneurs and managers. That this, what we're talking about here, is not a side agenda. This is it. This is the main game. Uh, it's not something cute that we can look at from the distance. If we don't embrace this, our country will never be the great country it was meant to be. It will just be a place where 40 families control 70% of the economic growth of this country. And that's not what the Constitution envisions. But you know, Filipinos are gentle to a fault. Mapagparaya, sabi na, di ba? Kaya ang sarap ma-oppress ng Pilipino kasi may patient eh. 400 years of the Spaniards, 50 years of the Americans. Now, almost 70 years of its, its own countrymen, uh, I mean, to put it plainly, exploiting fellow Filipinos. So much so that 10 to 12 million have to work abroad, separate from their families, and some of their students are, some of their children are here. We see the social cost of not having enough economic opportunities in the Philippines because our business models are just creating so much financial value. When we speak of financial value, this is the stock market, you know all of this. Our stock market is now 15, moving to 17 trillion, so a lot of money is being made. But this is not the real economy. This is only for a few who understand the equity markets. And we, we understand the equity markets. But less than 1% of Filipinos own equity. If you go to Malaysia, there are 35% own equity. In Singapore, more than 50% own equity. How many of you here are invested in the capital markets? Show your hands. No. I rest my case. <laughs> and so, your savings account earns less than one-third of a percent yes. in the bank when the inflation is above 5%. 
you, you see the picture. So if we have more businesses who will work with all of you guys to really build this kind of uh, model, we can create a critical mass and turn our country into a, a center of growth, human growth, of human flourishing. And that's a major challenge because we need to sing the same song. In a way, your success makes me nervous because the mainstream businesses say, oh, we can be the same because they're the ones doing the work. So sometimes I hope you don't succeed as well as you do. <laughs> no, really, I'm honest. Because if it becomes a side activity, they will just clear their conscience and say, oh, well, we don't have to do that because they're doing that. E mali nga yon, that's a fallacy. Uh, this is what our country needs. So I hope that's an idea you can think about and support us. Thank you. Thank you.